Attack on Titan is finally over. After a whole decade full of mysteries, hopes, and fighting for freedom. But what all of us can agree on is that it was a visual masterpiece. Today, we're stepping beyond the pages of the manga and the frames of the anime to see how can we bring the world of Attack on Titan to real life using the power of Unreal Engine. Before starting any project, there is a step that you should always keep in mind, and that is referencing. And for this job, I use a software called PureRef. Your references will determine how accurate your recreation will be. I try to get as many angles and camera views as possible to figure out the dimensions and the scales of the city. Only to remember that it's a fictional work. This isn't real life. The artist had the freedom to modify the scale of things based on the artistic needs of the story. So things might get different scales from a shot to shot to imply specific feelings. So I started modeling in Blender without thinking much about the scales. As long as it's visually similar to the original one, it should be fine. I made a cube and used the array modifier to duplicate it and that would be our 15 meters reference. After modeling one piece of the walls, create the rest of them using the array modifier. I also added a skeletal armature to use it as another scale reference for the human size. Create a curve, adjust it to make the shape of the district, then add a curve modifier to the walls targeting the curve. I added a mirror modifier and left a gap in the walls to keep some space for the gate, which will be modeled separately. Following the references, I modeled the gate using basic editing tools in Blender, extruding, beveling, duplicating, etc. You can watch my previous video for some Blender tips and tricks. To make a hole in the wall for the river, I created a cylinder and used the boolean modifier to subtract it from the walls. Then I added some details to the gates. I found this statue photo scan on Sketchfab, so I thought I could use it on the gates. I downloaded it, added a remesh modifier, and modified it in sculpt mode. I added the original logo and used it in the background to figure out the correct angle. More booleans, more refinement, adjust the scale so it almost looks flat, and make sure to remesh again. I duplicated the gates as instances by hitting Alt D instead of Shift D, which means whenever I want to adjust one of them, the others will be affected as well. I made another scale reference to make sure that each floor is almost 3 meters high to keep it a bit realistic. Then I started modeling some basic elements like windows with different shapes inspired by the references I had. I modeled a roof tile and used a simple set of geometry nodes to array them with a slight rotation for each tile. I continued modeling the roofs and started adding some details that nobody beside me will notice. The rooftops can be empty, so it was time to make some ceilings, windows, and chimneys. Even though we'll be texturing in Unreal, it's very important to separate your multiple objects using different materials. Speaking of materials, it's also important to UV unwrap your models before exporting. You can use cube projection unwrap for cube shaped objects, but for the roof tiles, I went to the top view, hit U project from view, then I scaled each UV island to a very small scale. This way, we'll have a separate place for each tile in the UV space. You can visualize it by using a noise texture, mixing it with the color of the tiles, and that allows us to make some color variations in the roofs, because in 3D, Repetition is the real enemy. After modeling some houses, I made some low poly objects that are similar in scale to the houses, so we can safely go to our next step, which is scattering. Make a collection for the low poly objects. Add a grid, subdivide it a bunch of times, and in the geometry nodes tab, hit new. Add a mesh to points node, add an instance on points, then use the collection we've just created as the instance. We have the meshes we needed, 
but all of them are pointing to the same direction. So I'll take this arrow as an example to visualize it better. Add a combine XYZ node to the rotation so we can control only the Z axis. We want our buildings to be rotated in four different directions. In other words, we aim to randomly rotate them by these angles. But in GeoNodes, they use radians for angles not degrees. And fortunately, it's possible to just write pi and Blender will recognize its value. Add a map range node and connect two directions to it. Then control it using a random value node with the data type set to an integer from 0 to 1, which means you'll get one of each directions randomly. Do the same thing for the other two directions and now we can consider their outputs as two separate directions. So do the same thing again. Add a random value for the seed and we're done. If you wanted to exclude places from scattering, add an object to be the boolean reference and make sure the boolean modifier goes before the geometry nodes modifier. Now we can leave some empty spaces for the roads and the river. And you know what, instead of making rotations exactly in these values, let's tweak them a bit. Replacing the value nodes with map range nodes with the same values, slightly less, slightly more. And we'll have some random yet organized rotations. I'll leave you a blend file in the description if you want to try it yourself. Could be useful. We can also randomize the scale a little bit. The origin points of the buildings should be always at the bottom of them because that's where they are gonna be scattered from. I tried replacing mesh to points with distribute points on faces followed by merge by distance and it gave some variations for the location of the houses. You might be wondering, why bother using the low poly houses at all? Can we just use the actual buildings? Well, you can try it if you feel brave enough. And when I did, Blender started running in seconds per frame instead of frames per second. Don't do that. I modeled a place for the river and its pavement with some other details. Then I started modeling the district building based on an image from the official studio. Then it was finally the time to try exporting everything to Unreal Engine for the first time. Before exporting, make sure you apply all modifiers and for the houses, I wanted them to be recognized as instances. Hit F3, make instances real and we're good to go. This way we'll be able to replace them easily in Unreal. Export selected as a USD format and enable instancing, which is under experimental, but what could go wrong? Create a new project in Unreal Engine and enable the USD import plugin, which is in beta, but what could go wrong? Quick Unreal Engine guide, navigate by holding the right mouse button and using the WASD buttons. Scroll up or down while moving to change the speed. F to focus on selected objects and control spacebar to open content browser. Now let's import our project. Go to window, virtual production, open your USD file and import it. I started noticing some problems in this scene, so I started documenting my tests. I wanted to replace my meshes, so I selected the low poly meshes, deleted them, and selected one of the houses as a replacement object, which actually works, but turns out not to be ideal. We'll get back to this later. After replacing all meshes, it's time to select the houses in the content browser and hit the magical button, Nanite. And you can notice the frame rate difference after enabling it. This is where the power of Unreal Engine 5 truly lies but that only led us to another problem see when you observe the houses from a close distance everything looks fine but when you start going far the roof tiles start to disappear gradually i tried multiple things but nothing seemed to work in fact that sounded like a common problem that happens when you enable nanite for meshes that have low poly objects so i had to walk around it how? By changing the color of the wood behind the roof tiles. And remember what I did for the roof tiles UVs? I did the same thing here to keep the color variations. And what do you know? It worked just fine. This is before and after. One problem out of the way. This is future me. And whenever I open the project, it crashes. So I had to recreate the project, re-import everything and expect that to give me different results. So the project kept crashing again and again and again and turns out that this is a problem caused by the USD import. Like, come on, who thought that using an experimental feature in Blender with a beta plugin could cause some problems? 
Not me, but I figured out a way to solve it. You have to replace the scattered actors by their actual static meshes. By finding them in the content browser, right click, assets, action, select actors using this asset, then replace it with the static mesh. You can notice the icons changing from actor to static mesh. Now just drag and drop the house and replace the static mesh. Do that for all houses. And this is the better way to replace your meshes. Another problem out of the way. I separated the walls as individual objects in Blender and exported them again. Select the objects, hit the end key, and they will be snapped automatically to the landscape. Speaking of the landscape, you can hit Shift 2 and there you can adjust the default landscape as you like. One problem that you might face in such a project is that the shadows might disappear from a distance. Select your directional light and adjust some of these settings. Basically, increasing the distance did the job. I started using some of the default textures to see how they turn out and what objects need to be UV unwrapped again. I added a grass material to the landscape, then added a landscape layer blend node to mix grass and dirt using the landscape paint tool. Create a layer info for each layer and start painting. I created a material for the roof tiles by multiplying the base color by a noise or a default variations texture. And that right here is what we unwrap the tiles for. Also, you can add another noise texture and multiply it with the output of the color. Just make sure to scale their UVs up by multiplying the texture coordinates with the big number. I created a material for the walls by mixing three different textures to avoid repetition. The key here is to use a LERP node to mix textures. This is similar to the mix color node in Blender. The walls usually have moss on the bottom, and I wanted to control that procedurally. So add an absolute world position node, which is basically a mask. Addition changes the mask location, and division makes it smoother. If you change these values using parameters, you will be able to see the changes in real time. Grab a moss texture, copy everything and paste it in the wall material. Mix both textures using a LERP node, using the mask we've just created as alpha. If it looks inverted, just switch the mixed materials. Adjust the tiling of the moss until you figure out the right scale. If the colors look weird, clamp the mask's value between 0 and 1. Now let's mix the mask with variations texture so it becomes more realistic. I made more materials for the other objects, then I did something every Unreal Engine user loves to do. Import a third person content pack, and in the world settings, change the game mode to the third person. Then hit play. Now you can walk around the scene you've just made just like any third person game. And what do you think? Should we turn this whole scene to an actual game later on? Leave a comment down below. Let's improve our landscape. There's a default add-on in Blender called ANT Landscape, and it will give you a lot of procedurally generated landscapes. I created basic terrain, imported everything to Unreal, gave them the same texture, and used the same masking technique that we used for the moss. And to be honest, the scene looks just fine for now. I like to change the sun's angle to see the scene in various lighting conditions. Time to add some trees. I chose this free pack from the marketplace and started scattering them using the foliage tool. If you go to the trees materials, you can enable wind, which is pretty neat. You can enable nanite for the foliage, so it doesn't matter how much you scatter. At this point, you just have to enjoy the process. Even though we made our roof tiles look unique, we need more color variation for each roof, which is possible by just adding a speed tree node to the material and adjusting it using a parameter. Now each roof looks slightly different in color. Okay, before we continue, you gotta see this. I couldn't resist showing you this scenery. It was truly magnificent. Which brings us to cinematic camera's effects, so... Add a post-processing volume and enable infinite extent, so it applies to the whole scene. Enable bloom and lens flare, and you'll have a cinematic camera effect. I downloaded a mountain and used it for the far scenes. I wasn't satisfied with how some buildings were scattered, so I went to the top view and started adjusting them manually. I modeled this small tower and started distributing it around the district. I also distributed some few bigger buildings. 
I downloaded a windmill model and put some as well. Using Quixel Bridge, I downloaded a brick wall and made a brick fence around the district building. Then I realized that the building doesn't have enough details, so I went back to Blender to add some. The default water material wasn't that good, so I had to enable the water plugin in Unreal Engine. And with it comes this realistic water material. I even had to increase the depth of the river to make it look good. I wanted to make a close shot, so I took this iconic image and used the software called FSpy to align Blender's camera to the scene's camera. And that will allow us to recreate this scene in Blender from the same angle and the same focal length. After adding some extra details, here is the final result. もう。<笑> 剣派の仲間に お前<笑> ここの巨人にはそれぞれ名前がある。これからお前へ継承される巨人にもだ。その巨人はいついかなる時代においても自由を求めて進み続けた自由のために戦った名は進撃の巨人。Thank you for watching this video. If you found anything useful, please consider subscribing. Stay creative and see you next time.